I'm a professor of plant pathology with UT Extension. So my, my specialty is diagnosis and management of ornamental diseases, turf grass. Uh, I work with nurseries, greenhouses, sod farms, golf courses, of course, people that do landscape management, uh, forages, so a lot of different things. There, you know, you could look at it there, there so, are some good plant diseases. There are some that are used for biocontrol of weeds, which would be useful, but there's not too many that are that we would care to hang around. So any plant problem, you know, I, I talk to a lot of people and, and usually it's, well, I've already self-diagnosed and I've already treated with this. I'm like, okay, well, the diagnosis was wrong, so you use the same wrong treatment. But what I would suggest is taking some photos or a sample and taking it to your local extension office and let the agent there who knows a lot of the local problems a look at it. If they can't identify it, then they will send it to us in Nashville at the Soil Plant and Pest Center. And we have a lot of years. I think the three of us that do most of the diagnosis probably have about 120 years experience. So there's not much that we haven't seen. Organic options, we often recommend neem oil for powdery mildews and some leaf spots. There are some copper fungicides that are like copper soaps that can be used. And there are some bicarbonate products now, the only downside of some organic products is you're going to be spraying them more often, maybe once a week rather than as opposed to every two to three weeks for a synthetic product, but they definitely have their place. Insects that cause problems, we often wait until there's a certain threshold or we see them and then we go and treat and everything's good. But with plant diseases, if you let the disease manifest itself and spread, then often you're talking about, okay, next year you do this because it's too late. So the only diseases that we would actually spray with a fungicide, organic or synthetic, would be those that we know historically are going to show up every year. And then we'd like to have them in place before the disease ever shows up to keep healthy plants healthy. You don't think of fungicide as curing a problem. Keeping healthy plants healthy is what we like to do. So there are plant pathogens that live in the soil that cause root rots and stem rots. I saw one yesterday on the black-eyed Susan called Southern blight, southern stem rot, and it lives in the soil and basically has these little structures that germinate and it starts growing and will, almost any plant it comes into contact with it will kill. But then we have other leaf spot diseases, mildews, rust. Uh, yesterday I saw rust on a plant I'd never seen rust before. It's not even been reported in the U.S. So there's always new stuff that you run into, but there are fungi that live on the plant, on the foliage, may attack the flowers, the fruit, also the roots, so all plant parts are susceptible. Plant pathogen can be spread a lot of ways. So the global, global movement of plant material is a, is a way that we have gotten downy mildews into the U.S. in the past 10 years, downy mildew of impatience, downy mildew of basil. Didn't even exist in the U.S. 15 years ago. So walked out in my garden yesterday, there on the sweet basil was downy mildew. 15 years ago, I never would have seen that. But because it's been moved from Europe here, we now have to deal with that. In most years, you'll now find it in all 33 states east of the Mississippi. So it's, it's here to stay. Uh, we move infected plant material. So moving infected plant material from the west coast to Tennessee, sometimes we move plant pathogens that way. And then long distance. A storm like we had this week can actually pick up the spores in Houston, Texas. And as the front moves through, it will deposit those in middle Tennessee and spread it that way. So there's long distance transport that way. So with plant disease, it starts in many different ways. You might see, you may go out one day and see a plant that just wilted, the foliage has just flopped down. And it could be due to the roots are dead, so you'd have to pull it and look at the roots. Or it could be, I mentioned southern blight, a stem rot. You look at the stem right at the soil line for white fungal growth and little structures. Uh, but then for leaf spots, you look for developing lesions on the leaves. With mildew, you look for white fungal growth on the upper leaf surface for powdery mildew or the lower leaf surface for downy mildew. Uh, one of my colleagues put out an alert today about late blight on tomato, which is a downy mildew. So there are, there are things that show up late in the season. There's still people growing crops that could be affected. There's some things that have been, they're old, but they've been really a problem this year. And one would be southern blight that I mentioned earlier, stem rot that causes plants to wilt. It's been a problem in vegetable gardens and perennial gardens. Uh, basil downy mildew, it's back every year. 
And 15 years ago, as I mentioned, you wouldn't even see it anywhere in Tennessee or the U.S. And it's here and it's here to stay. And I found it in my own garden yesterday. Uh, so it's here. We're also investigating a new a disease new to Tennessee that's, that's hitting sassafras. So we're trying to confirm that. But there's a disease called laurel wilt that in Middle Tennessee in some counties is killing hundreds of sassafras. Uh, so not only will it hit sassafras, but it hits other plants in that family, which would be our native spice bush that would grow in this area of the plateau. There's always, there seems always to be something new. Plant diseases that affect the quality of vegetables and fruit most people would not consume. Uh, they just would just don't appear like something you know that you would want to eat. Uh, but as far as dangers from toxins or anything, there's really not. It's, it's, that's not the problem. The problem is just that the aesthetics of the fruit, the vegetables, they just don't look good. So you would not, I mean, you would buy, you'd not buy, you'd buy the one that's pretty nice and not diseased compared to the one that has spots or, but what happens if you did buy a watermelon, a tomato, banana, it would not last very long. If you kept it in your pantry for two days, it'd probably be consumed by the fungus that's growing on it. So that would be a reason to, everybody buys the nice looking fruit with no spots on it basically it is susceptible to this new disease, downy mildew. Because this is a new problem, make sure that it's not already infected when you buy it. Make sure the plants you're buying are healthy and don't have this grayish fungal growth on the underside of the leaf. The other thing is just harvest periodically through the season to harvest what you can because generally by this time of year, if you're growing basil, you're gonna have downy mildew now. And as far as treatments, there's really not any good treatments for this to prevent it. And the one thing that separates this from some of the other downy mildews is this is seed transmitted. So just because you start your basil from seed doesn't mean you're not gonna have a problem with downy mildew. It could still show up. So it's too cold here. On the plateau, it's too cold for this to overwinter and survive. The plant will survive, the fungus doesn't survive. So where does it grow? Well, it grows where the basil's not killed, either in greenhouses or growing in gardens in the Caribbean or Florida. So basically I say downy mildews, most downy mildews overwinter where we all would like to, and that's Florida. And then as the season progresses in the spring, it starts moving up because it produces a lot of spores. And this is one that a front, a thunderstorm could pick up, and as the storm moves, could deposit the spores hundreds of miles away where it picked it up. So just removing it uh, doesn't mean that your neighbor won't have a problem because the spores could come in from another part of the country.